Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, uh, we are going to continue looking at our Linux Mint Debian edition running KDE. And I did have a couple of updates. Uh, the last time uh, I was talking about this system, I had some issues with some of the thumbnails. Uh, one of the users in the community was able to point me towards the correct package to get that working. So now my thumbnails are indeed working. The other thing is I wanted to go to with an a increased version of KDE. And so, of course, Debian stretch defaults to 5.8. I found a script which was enabled to easily get me up to 5.12. So still not the 100% absolute cutting edge, but certainly a very modern uh, KDE here. And so you can see that I'm running Linux Mint Debian Edition 3, which is codenamed Cindy. And I have increased the Linux kernel to 4.18. I'm running Plasma 5.12. And I added in a few other things. You can also see for those interested, this is my uh, media PC, which runs an AMD A8 5500 APU with a Radeon HD integrated graphics. And it says 5.1 gigs of RAM. It should have six gigs of RAM in here. I'm not sure what the difference is. Probably one gig is being dedicated to the graphics card. And that's probably why I'm running a little bit less RAM than that. So with that being said, I wanted to talk about five reasons why I like KDE. Obviously, it's not my absolute number one favorite distro, but it is right up there with Budgie and Cinnamon. Cinnamon is my number one, and number two is Budgie and KDE. They kind of fight back and forth. There's some things I really like Budgie does better. There's some things I like KDE better. So I want to go ahead and talk about these. Number one is KDE is highly customizable, more so than any other desktop. And so if you just go over into your system settings and you do a search for your system settings here, you can see that you have a variety of different settings. Now, as I mentioned in my last video uh, about this desktop where I had said that uh, I could tell it was an older version because of the way the settings lay out, this is the new settings layout. So this is, uh, this is how it looks now. So a little bit easier to navigate the settings. So you click on one of these guys, and then now I have a center column, which is pointing out my uh, desktop themes, cursor themes, and things like that. So it's a lot easier to navigate the settings, and this is actually a huge win that uh, now it's not quite as confusing to figure out where everything is. But you can see a ton more settings than there are in uh, in many of your other the other systems. Uh, far more than Cinnamon, far more than Budgie, certainly more than GNOME, um, and anything else. And the fact that it is highly customizable is to me an attractive thing, because if I really like my modern UIs, modern icons, modern everything, I can make it look just like that. I can style this thing to look exactly like a Mac. I can style it to look exactly like a Windows computer. I can go with old style. I can go with new style. And just the ability to customize this is great. Now, of course, not everybody always cares about the computer customizability. But for me, that I spend so much time around computers, I want a computer that is just beautiful to look at. And KDE allows me to do that because it is so highly customizable. Number two, KDE has joined the ranks of your services that can create online accounts. So if you happen to use something like Nextcloud, which I use, which I don't sync absolutely everything to, but it is for me a good balance between a good, very well secured system being is that I have an end-to-end -end, uh, fully encrypted Nextcloud container on a server that even the company I'm buying my servers from do not have the root access to my uh, system. I feel fairly confident that what is in there is for my eyes only. I still, of course, don't use everything for those, but at the same token, it does give me a good balance to make sure I can back up text messages if I wanted to. I can back up my contacts if I wanted to. I can back up whatever else I might want to off of my phone. And also Nextcloud allows me to easily share things from various devices and things. Also the ability to uh, provide files for people who might need them without having to rely on Google or Dropbox or things like that. So KDE does now support online accounts. Uh, this was not in, on here by default. There's uh, two more KDE packages. I can't remember what they are off the top um, that you need to install in order to, um, 
to get your online accounts working if it's not set up on your distro by default. And so in this case here, what I needed to do is just install these. Now, it's not quite as robust as GNOME is. We have the option of Google, OwnCloud, and Twitter at this point in time. Uh, there are actually some other packages you can install which will add the ability to, to increase more of these. For me, OwnCloud and NextCloud are going to work the same way for integration, so this is all I needed to do. But then what this enables me to do is I can set up my online accounts here and certain K applications will interface with this directly like K organizer and things like that. Uh, of course, I don't have to use these online account systems. If you use something like evolution like I do, you can easily add your calendars and contacts to that. Uh, K organizer, you can add them separately. But for those people that do rely heavily on online accounts or in enterprise areas where you need to utilize online accounts to sync up your contacts in your organization. KDE does now have the ability to integrate. It's not quite as robust as GNOME is, so in a system where I have to use this well, I still recommend Linux Mint because the latest versions of Linux Mint can fully integrate everything between your folders, your contacts, your calendars, your files, things like that. And so the fact that this has online accounts and is moving in that direction and is getting better with every version is a great win for KDE. Number three, it is easy to use alternatives on certain types of things. So for example, as I said in my other video, I really like this launcher better as my main menu. It's just this, it's sleek, it's different, it's, it's fascinating. However, for people that don't necessarily like that, nearly every type of widget on KDE has this little alternatives panel which you can get to by right clicking. When you click on your alternatives, you'll see that you have other options. So the application menu is more like a traditional type menu. So if I were to pull this up, you can see I have more of a traditional type menu system, uh, much more familiar to anyone coming from like a Windows type uh, Windows type background. We have our favorites, we have our quick startup shutdown our recent applications, documents, and the various things. But also, if you want something even nicer, even more sleek, you can go with our application launcher. And what your application launcher gives you, oh, my apologies, it wasn't the launcher. Whoops. Dashboard is what I was looking for. Uh, pull up your application dashboard, and this gives you something that's not quite Mac-y, but very close. We have our favorites over here. We have our list of applications. We have all of our recent documents, recent applications here. Um, we have a listing of all applications, nice and alphabetized, and then we can go into our individual settings over here. We can easily uh, log out, reboot, and shut down the system here. Uh, for me, I like the launcher. This is my favorite one. But you have these types of alternatives, and you have these everywhere. Whether it is even like my show, di my uh, minimize all windows to show desktop, you realize that uh, there are two ways of doing this. There are the way that Windows handles this, which minimizes all windows, and there's the way that Mac does this, which doesn't minimize anything. It just simply shows the desktop. No matter which one of those you like, you can right click. Um, and uh, eh, it looks like it's not a, an alternative listed on that one. It used to be an alternative listed on that one. Um, but you actually have the option to um, show the desktop and to minimize all windows. Um, it's going to make a liar out of me, though. There's show desktop. So show desktop is going to behave differently than minimize all windows. So I'm just going to go ahead and drop that on the desktop so we can... Uh, show you what we're talking about. So if I pull up, let's pull up um, a couple instances of Firefox here. Okay. So now I have this guy here. I have this guy here. I have this guy here. We're gonna, I'm gonna have to throw this guy on my panel right now to do that. Which actually, I'm gonna need to unlock my widgets. Uh, actually, they're already unlocked. I didn't lock them from last time I was doing things. Okay, so the one that's out here, this is show desktop. The one that's over here is minimize all windows. So you can see those differences. So what is the difference between these two? Well, if I have a bunch of windows open and I click minimize all windows, now all windows are minimized. If I pull this up, I can go down and pull each one of these up and down separately of each other. Okay, but if I have the show desktop button, what this does is this puts them all out. You can kind of see they were kind of thrown to the four corners. If I pull something open, 
Um, not bad example because that's the trash. <laughs> but if I pull something open, it's going to sh pull everything right back out on top of the desktop. I'll go from this, this direction again here. Um, so what it's going to do is it's going to push everything out of the way. This is the same exact functionality that you get inside of a Mac. So these are no longer mapped as alternatives to each other, but it is still, uh, it is still something that, um, uh, that you have the ability to, to do. So let me just go ahead and get rid of my show desktop because I don't like that one. Close that. And now we're going to relock widgets. So what all has alternatives? Well, your menus have alternatives. Anything like your clocks will have alternatives. Um, so we have digital clock settings. Uh, let me unlock the widgets again. Uh, you can see here we have an alternative to the clock. Uh, we have alternatives to um, the menus. I think we might have, do we have alternatives to that? No, we don't have alternatives to that. There's just a variety of things we have alternatives to. I just have to look through the list to see what they happen to be. All right, so that is uh, certainly one of those features, um, just alternatives to the variety of different uh, sources, references, and things like that. Number four, a very attractive way of setting up your desktop. It's not boring. It's not... Um, old, it's not just purely modern. If I do anything from the right context menu where I see this icon rich functionality, which you can do this in several other desktops as well, uh, but on default, this is just a really nice look and really nice feel. Everything from your windows to your styles, even your widgets can be set and customized to be very nice, very stylized, and very attractive. This is part of the customizability, but I did want to pull it out as a separate thing because of how nice you can get the system to look. Of course, you can look at my other builds where I'm talking about theming it to see what mine looks like, which is all transparent, glassy feel. This one's less, slightly less transparent, but still has a hint of transparency merged with a hint of modernity with icons that are kind of like old and piratey, which is kind of cool. Um, but what you see here is just the, the ability just to make a system look really nice. It looks really organized. It allows you to do a lot of different, uh, a lot of different things with your system. And it, and it does so in a very, very nice format. Our last point is if you like KDE, there's a distro that's going to run it for you. Um, of course, what I did here is a little bit more different in that I'm running a distro that was really designed to run Cinnamon, uh, but I'm now running the latest version of KDE, not the latest, but one of the more recent versions of KDE on a very recent kernel and just a, a nice fun way. It was easy for me to do that because there's back ports, there's scripts, there's ways that I can increase my version of KDE without diving in and recompiling code. But suppose you don't want to do that. Where else can you find it? Well, if you just head right on over to the uh, community.kde.org forward slash distributions, you can see that there is a list of 41 different distributions, including on Windows. I had no idea about, about any of that. Uh, but some of the, not all of these are Linux. Um, obviously, there's a few down here that are uh, free BSD, like there's NetBSD, Netrunner, uh, but we have OpenSUSE, we have uh, Q4OS, uh, and this probably isn't all of them. Um, but of course, Debian, Antergos, Arch, uh, there's Manjaro, there's an Ubuntu, which is called Kubuntu. So you can get this anywhere. Of course, if you want the absolute latest on KDE, go with Neon, which gives you a rolling KDE packages with an Ubuntu, uh, LTS Ubuntu uh, core. They are still listing Linux Mint, which did drop official support, but I do have videos, obviously, uh, my previous video on this channel and uh, another one earlier talking about how to get um, KDE on Linux Mint 19. Uh, and then there's just a variety of other ones. We looked at Neptune uh, the other day. So there's uh, a lot of options if you want to run this. This is a great distribution um, or a great desktop environment rather. It has a lot of custom customizability, a lot of features. Uh, the ability to add themes easily without digging into the code is just a, a good thing. That's really why I like the Plasma desktop most of all. It's just a very nice 
Uh, very nice, very comfortable system that you can set up any way you want. You want it to look like a Mac, you can make it look exactly like a Mac. You want a Windows, you can make it look like Windows. And then you can just do anything and everything in between. That's why I really like the KDE desktop. And uh, I hope that uh, you try out the KDE desktop and let me know if you do what your thoughts are on it. I hope you've enjoyed this video from Switched to Linux. If you'd like to help support the channel, check out the links at the top. There is another video over here. You can check out our Patreon page down here. And you can check out shop.switchtolinux.com for information on a t-shirt like this or some other designs. Thanks for watching and hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.